Hello, my name is Mark Colliker. I'm an archaeologist and educator with the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And today I'm going to demonstrate flint napping, the ancient art of making stone tools. One of the oldest stone technologies is called Oldowan. It dates back two million years, a little older than two million years ago. Homo habilis, first people doing it. Basically taking a stone, a flint, or sometimes called chert, hitting it with another stone to create a sharp cutting edge. This is a piece of flint has cortex, which is limestone. This has uh, uh, been submerged in water. Uh, it's basically been cracked. It used, to, it used to be rounded. I cracked it, made it have. Now I can turn this into other uh, uh, cutting tools. So what I'm going to do is strike down off this edge here to create a cutting edge right along here. My hammer stone, holding the edge with my fingers. Flake has come off, creating a sharp edge here. Several flakes have come off, more sharp edge. I'm going to continue it around here. So I have a very sharp edge right here that I've created. All the flakes have come off where I struck from this face. I can hold it like this, and this makes a very good chopping or cutting tool. This part that has not been modified fits nicely in my hand and gives me a good handle. This is a great example of a later old Dewan tool. The simple first tools would have just been one or two flakes removed. This has created a whole edge by repeating the flaking down the edge. Archaeologists, it said, dig garbage. The flakes that I was striking off of here, most of them are left behind as garbage, and that's what archaeologists find at sites. That's the evidence we have of people in North America going back over 10,000, 12,000 years. By doing flint napping, I learn how to read this stone and tells me what the people were doing in prehistoric times. These tools will be taken and be used miles away from the point they were made. They may be discarded, broken, thrown away, or lost. To make one of these tools, you create a lot of garbage. By being able to read this garbage, you can tell what the people were doing. Larger flakes I mean people were starting out. They were closer to the source of the stone, near a quarry. Medium-sized flakes, people were thinning a piece. Small, tiny flakes. People were sharpening broken or dull tools or finishing off a tool far from where it was originally created. To attempt to recreate a hand axe, I'll start with a piece of flint or chert, which would have been dug from the ground, probably would have been a much larger piece. This has been broken off to create a fairly usable tool as is, there's an edge here. What I want to do is make a sharp edge all the way around this piece. If you compare it to the finished hand axe here, you'll see we have this cutting edge here, and we have a big flat broad edge here. So I have to turn all the edges on this piece into cutting edges. So I'm going to start at one end, and I'm going to zigzag. I'm going to take a flake off from one face, a flake off from the other face, first face, the opposite face, until I create a straight edge here. So as you can see this is a square edge. Remove the flake from this face. I turn it over and I use this area where the flake came off to strike to take a flake from the reverse face. You can see, remember it was a square, flat edge. Now it is somewhat straight, but definitely sharper. This is a great cutting edge right here, fresh, sharp edges. Uh, in itself, this could be a chopping tool or a hand axe. <laughs>
Do a little demonstration with uh, obsidian, volcanic glass. One flake has already been removed from the stone. Uh, when you take a flake off, it creates two ridges. Force wants to follow these ridges. It's a nice spot right here. I can take a big flake off here uh, to make a potential two out. This is gonna be a little different than what I was doing. I'm gonna use my leg as an anvil. So I'm going to jam this into my thigh here. And strike it to take the flake off. It's gonna hold the energy in the stone. Most of it cracked, shattered. If it had stayed together, I would have had a quite large flake. But I do have a super sharp tool right here. With the sharp edge, hold it with my teeth. Very sharp. To finish off a piece, to resharpen a dull or broken tool, I'm going to use pressure flaking, the tip of a deer antler. I've prepared the edge by grinding. I used a leather pad to protect my hand. And I'm going to use my legs for a lot of force in my whole upper body. All that force is gonna be positioned on the point of this deer antler. I'll get several hundred pounds of pressure applied to the edge here. And I squeeze and I squeeze and I squeeze when I want the flake to remove, snap my wrist. Squeeze and squeeze when I want the flake to remove. Starting with a core of obsidian, using hammer stones to remove large flakes. The flakes are reduced using antler tools. Finally, sharpened with pressure flaking. create a variety of spearheads and knives. <laughs>